All right. So we are back with our second season of hosting the Low Post podcast. I'm your official host, PJ Thomas, as Danny likes to call me, Podcast Pete. I'm going to let the other gentlemen here with me go around and introduce themselves. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Worse than I oh, oh, Shane, no. take oh, it off. See, I'm new to this. I'm new to this. I'm new. Shane's the this new guy. Right in. Shane's the new guy. So why, don't, why don't we let Shane go first, and then, and then we can go. Uh, this is just everyone's worst nightmare. They already knew who it was. They know the name. <laughs> and then you know me. I'm Dan. I was the head guy last year. I'm away. I'm not as involved this year. So Pete's taking the front seat. Shane's kind of filling in for me. I'm going to make guest spots where, wherever I'm able to with my schedule. But happy to be back. So for those of you that don't know, Danny is getting his doctorate in podiatry. Um, from Temple University, as you can see from the scrubs for those watching on on YouTube, looks very handsome in those. Um, you know, and and we uh, we're glad to have you guys back. Everyone's already been texting us, uh, saying when's the podcast coming out. So we had to jump on it. We had a few hiccups along the way, some personal stuff, but we're here. Days move on, and uh, we're gonna get going. So I do want to jump right into it, and I want to get to. Uh, the first game that we're going to talk about, I'm going to share my screen so you boys can, um, you know, we can kind of just go as, as we see fit. But I think we're going to start with the game breakers and the ice trays uh, for game one. Obviously, the game breakers, the big name that we're looking at here <laughs> is going to be is going to be Gian Avedigian, the former MVP, 40 points per game guy. Um, you know, there's there's a couple guys that we'll see on this, like Justin Titsworth, Danny, the milkman from last year. We love um, the milkman. And our absolute favorite, <laughs> actual, not a joke, our favorite, potentially one of the one of the best friendos of the DA's boys of all time in a day bright, making his return to the Legacy Leagues. Saw him the other day. Great kid. Um, pretty sure he's a rapper. Great all-around dude. Go listen to his He stuff. does a lot. He does a yeah. lot. Great dude. Um, I'm a little bit biased towards the ice trays for that reason. Um, but we'll we'll talk about this game. Um, in Gian's post game interview, right? Everybody knows Gian. The in, the interns know Gian. They talked a little bit about him in the post game show, saying he's their guy that they want to watch. Obviously, um, you know he didn't put up his usual forty point uh, performance today, but uh, he had a double double uh, with nineteen points, ten rebounds, um, and he said that they kind of were screwing around for a majority of the game. Some of the guys came you know, a little faded in Gian's words. That's um, <laughs> use the exact terms that he said. And it's in the fourth quarter, they kind of turned it on, um, you know, so I, I didn't get to see much of this game. I just know the, some of the players in this game and, and kind of what they're capable of. Um, so Danny, I'll let you kind of go first you, with the returning names that you know, and what you see here. Um, do you think Gian was accurate in his statement that, you know, they just kind of screwed around or do you think that, you know, the ice trays, while it was a 15 point loss, uh, really, you know, you, you think that they're going to be a team that's going to be able to stick around the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, the the way I look at this, do you remember when the Cleveland Browns up and moved to Baltimore and became the the um, the Col- the Ravens in Baltimore? And I then recall. the NFL was like, you know what? We feel so bad that they did this to the city. We're going to give you another Cleveland Browns. That's how I feel with the Rhode Island Warriors and the Game Breakers situation because <laughs> – the Game Breakers are a new team and the Warriors are still in the league. But if you, PJ, if you scroll down and you look at the roster for the Game Breakers, I think all but two of these guys were on the Rhode Island Warriors. Yeah, last all year. these names look pretty familiar. Yeah. So this is this essentially is, the real Rhode Island Warriors from last year. Effectively, yeah. I mean, this is a team full of guys with the uh, with the exception of, of Joe, number zero. <clears throat> this is a team of guys who have played Someone in this said league. He's pretty good, um, by the way. Oh, yeah. I said that to PJ, like there were some highlights of him and I clicked on his Instagram and he's got like 38,000 followers. I was like, who the hell is this guy? But no, he's pretty good from watching all the, from watching the Snapchat. But this is a team of most of the guys here have a lot of experience in this league. We've got Gian, who is an MVP. We've got Hachi, who in my mind is the all-star game MVP from last yeah, year. Yeah, he should have won that my one. Team won. And well, you got Trump, of course. So this is a very good roster. And I do think that there were, I, I like what Gian said, where they were they were kind of slacking a little bit. They they kept them in the game for a little too long. Not to not to bash on the ice trays because they, they have some familiar faces too with some experience, but it does seem like there's a lot of new names. So with those newer teams, there's a lot of reps that you got to get under you, kind of get used to the league. Shane, go ahead. 
Uh, just the thing about the game breakers is like I feel like their story or whatever they were the last couple of years is they have a bunch of great ISO hoopers on that team. Like one on one, there's some tough coverages there. But if they're not meshing and they don't figure out who's hot early, they're not like the you're not worried about them. They can beat you. They can win if they find out who's hot early. But they they haven't really shown me the team aspect of what they're gonna do yet. Like I said, great one-on-one hoopers. I've played against some of these guys and tough covers, like I said, but I don't know if the, they mesh as a team completely to, like, be worried about yet. You know, I've, and for sure to touch on that, I think um, we've all said that Charles Correa might arguably be the best player on this team. Uh, might, he turns arguably it on, he turns be, it on. might arguably be the best one-on-one ISO player in the entire league uh, when he's on. And so it's kind of that same battle that you hear them talking with, with the Celtics where Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are both great players individually, but what can they do, um, you know, as a team? And I think we see a little bit of the opposite of that. And we'll get that later with a team like Lob City, who has all great players and they're just able to kind of work together, but they do give Colin Burns his spotlight and, you know, uh, and, and Jose once in a while. So, um, it's going to be about, can this team let Gian do his thing? Can this team, when Gian doesn't have it, can Charles Correa be there and just drop 40? I mean, we've seen him do it. He's an absurd basketball player. And I think they have to decide who their guy is. Cause it looks like, I mean, we know that they have about four or five guys that can probably put up these double digit numbers every night, but who are they going to let take the reins in crunch time? I think that the answer for that has to be Gian. You have to give them the shot to do that. But I think that could be where they start to struggle, where you have so much talent um, that it becomes like a Boston Celtics type thing. Yeah. And even looking at their numbers, I don't want to like just keep folk honing in on them or like seem negative about them. Charles having one assist, just that'll never win you a good game. Yeah. He like, if they want to win, that one-two punch of Charles and Gian needs to be like dish, 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 shot, shot, shot. That, yeah. like, and that's what I mean. That one-on-one Hooper thing isn't going to work. Right. And I, and I foresee Hachi being that third guy. He's a great third guy to have on a team, um, you know, but he's, he's got to be, he's got to kind of play a role I think this year in order for them to to get to that next level of success. And I know he, he probably thinks cause he does in reality have the talent to be a two guy or a one guy on a team. Um, I just don't know if it's on this team. I don't, and that's not a knock to him. I just think he's playing with such talented guys and Gian and Charles and, and apparently this, this Joseph guy um, that we don't know yet. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of, but um, he's going to, he's going to have to kind of play that, uh, that third, fourth role. Um, and not to not to exile them. Let's let's get to the ice trays a little bit. Uh, hey, not to be outdone before you get to the ice trays. Another big pickup for the game breakers. One of our fan favorites, David Dupina. David Dupina from he came in and had like what was it, thirteen points off their bench? Let's see. He had, yeah, he had thirteen off the bench, five rebounds. Very David efficient. He's a good buddy good of mine. Dude. Yeah, no, we we like David Dupina. He's a great player. Um, they're gonna have a really talented team. They're very athletic. That's gonna be where they shine. They remind me of a more mature version of the ozone boys for those that know them oh um, much more mature <laughs> some, version but <laughs> i know bringing up bad memories for shane great memory i have great memories the ozone boys right no exactly um uh, you know and, and 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 so to get to the ice trades i do want to talk about what we think that their potential might be for in this league um looking at the names i only know two guys in the milkman in a day um, it's just a matter of what we what we seeing from their stats. They didn't have a great game shooting. That can probably be chalked up to, you know, their first game. It, it looks like this is a lot of their first games ever in the league. Um, or it could just be, you know, that they're going to shoot 27% on the year from three. In legacy leagues where it's either a three or a dunk, that's going to be tough. Um, but we know what a day can do. I don't know what happened to him that he got one point in this game and really only took uh, attempted th- uh, two shots the whole night. Um, I think for their success, they got to get him way more involved because he's a great player. Um, I don't know how great or or how good at all these other guys are. Um, we know what a day can do, and he's definitely closer to a double-digit guy per game. I'd like to see him get a little bit more involved. I don't know if he played, if he was hurting a little bit, what the case may be, but um, he's definitely the guy that I'd like to see get some more time from them. Um, the milkman shot really well from throughout from three, three to seven, 42%. Um, but after that, they really had no answer from three. 
Um, so, you know, I, I think we'll see how this goes the rest of the year. I don't know what their schedule looks like coming up. We can probably get that out a little bit later, but you know, what do you guys, and I'll let, I'll go to Danny first. What do you guys foresee their status kind of being in this league? Do you see them as being that fourth team or do you see them kind of in that bottom half? Yeah. So, I mean, this is something where like, I mean, I touched on this last year where it's like that Boston Blazers, Sin City, like that group has always kind of been around in some form since like winter 19, like when we entered the league. And I, I'm assuming that this is the iteration of them now is the ice trays. And if, if it's just those two, uh, the milkman and a day coming back, then I don't know if they have, I mean, I need to see a little bit more out of these new guys to see if they have those pieces to kind of be one of those like, four or five seed, like middle of the pack teams, like definitely their second or third year in the league. Uh, they were kind of closer to that middle of the pack. They could have challenged one of the top teams on any given night, but I, I definitely think it's a little too early. I mean, these guys, like you were even touching on the three pointers. I mean, if, if a few more fell for them in the night, it could have been a different story. Like if they held on in that fourth quarter a little bit more, then might, we might be talking a little bit different about them. But right now I don't think I have enough of a sample size to, make an effective judgment on where I think they're going to end up. Shane, we'll go to you and then we'll move on to the next game. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't want anyone to take this in disrespect. And like, of course, coming from me, it's probably going to sound like disrespect, but like, I don't know many of these guys and just at a first glance, they're going to be bottom barrel and it's, that could change. I haven't really seen these guys play. And to Danny's point, two of these guys are returning. Let's assume the other, what, six or seven, this is their first time in the league, first time together as a team. Never works well. We've seen it the last three years where first time teams come in and think it's, oh, this is going to be easy. I'm going to be flushing dunks. And it ain't as easy or like as it, as it may seem. And then just you, you take some tough losses. You take your knocks early. And then by year two, you figure it out. So mm-hmm. I, I got to like this to be completely honest, it's probably a bottom barrel team this year. No disrespect, but just from what I've seen. Yeah, and I, and I don't necessarily foresee them being in that top four, and we'll get to who's in that top four a little bit later, but I do agree with you on that, and that's not a knock to them. I just think they're going to have to take some time to figure it out. Um, to get to our next game, um, let's talk about familiar faces to us, both <laughs> both team names, but maybe some new guys on the Rhode Island Warriors because we've established that the game breakers are the Rhode Island Warriors, but actually looking at it, I don't know any of these guys, um, but the halfway crooks, Commissioner Joey Zacco's team. Um, they lost in classic halfway crooks fashion um, to the Rhode Island Warriors course. by three. Um, halfway crooks with a ton of talent and experience, yet can't figure it out ever the first half of seasons. I don't understand it. Um, arguably one of the best big men in the league with Jeff Winchell. And, you know, uh, and you don't win that game. They have a new guy as their guy, I guess, is Dominique Langston. I didn't really get to see him play much. Um, they have our, our great friend, Devin Devon Pina, that Joey is classically known for scalping players from teams that leave the league. Um, you know, all familiar names though, Spence Freeman, Jeff Winchell, Jared Hansen, Joey, and Mike Wilbur. Um, you know, so, and then Rhode Island Warriors, all new teams. I mean, all new players. Uh, they talked a lot about Charles Alexander. Seems like a nice guy. Uh, put up 23 points in this game. Then Marvin D- uh, Dowdle put up 21 points. So those are their kind of two guys. Um, you know, w- what do you guys think about this game? Why, when halfway is clearly the more experienced, we don't know about more talented, but they do have a, a good amount of talent, but clearly the more experienced team. Why are they struggling to win? in a close game against uh, a team full of same name, but pretty much all new guys. Danny, I'll let you go first. Yeah. So, I mean, you touched on it. They got a couple big acquisitions. Dominique Langston's actually one of the big names from the Connecticut league back when they did that, he was on Joey's team back there. And then they bring in Devin Devon Pina. But I think a big problem with halfway is Just that they like to bring in the big guys. And I mean, I feel like I always remember, I always joke with you about when the Lakers brought in Dwight Howard the first time in like 2012, sometimes bringing in the big name isn't always going to be a good fit for your team. And I feel like we've seen that with halfway before where we see them in the off season and Joey's like, I'm working the phones. I got this guy. I got this guy. He wants to play for me. He wants to play for me. And I'm like, okay. And then we get to like 
week four last year and they weren't they like oh and four last year or was that a couple years ago they, they started off i think it was last year sorry they started off bad. yeah i mean i, I think it, it falls down to a chemistry thing probably i mean also i mean i'm gonna do my yearly bag on spence freeman you had all this time to practice and you come back with a one for six so i will say spence, he's real like Devin booker he came <laughs> up the dead but he like he he That's came up to me before the game and said, I don't want to hear slander on the podcast this year. I've been working on my shooting. I said, Spence, I would love nothing more. I than mean, he has worked on it. He made one shot. Yeah, but but, I, but I, I said to him, I said, there's nothing that I would love more than for you to go out there and hit six threes because I think the league would be better. It, I think the league's a better place when you're dropping 20 to 30 points a game. He was like, I got you. I got you. And then you go out there <laughs> and you, you, you shoot one for six. I mean, I, I don't know enough about how he plays in a 10 foot league, but I think as far as the the legacy leagues goes, I just don't think that living on the perimeter is the kind of style of play that he needs to have in his bag. He's way too athletic for that. I think he's yeah. just got to be a, a rim runner. Um, you know, and we'll see. We'll see Dominique Langston. Joey's team was what? Run. Run TMC. TMC. Yeah. He's trying to be the Golden State Warriors. Not going to happen, Joey. You're only going to ever win championships in Connecticut. You probably won't win one in Rhode Island. Hey, he never won one in Connecticut. I don't think. I think uh, they the came close. They Did he get one? Yeah. He's been to the finals at least once. I don't know if he yeah, won. I think he won out there. He's not going to get one in Rhode Island. Nah. I can that. But, Tough. you know, I, I think it's the classic. It's the same kind of thing with not to the same extent as the game breakers, but. You have a decent amount of talent with Jeff Winchell, Devin Devon Pina, Dominique Langston. You got to pick a guy. I know Spence, yeah, he's the guy. He's not the guy on this team. He can't be. I, I mean, in reality, he's a good player. He, he's a good secondary guy on a team. But you, the best player on this team, if it's not Dominique Langston, who I don't know much about, to my knowledge, is Jeff Winchell by far. It's a great big man. Um, I think everyone can acknowledge that. So I, I don't know what their struggles are. I don't know. Losing a close game like this is not because of talent. It's because they're not able to close out games. They need to be able to close out games that are this close, especially to a team that has a bunch of new guys. Um, they should have realistically blown them out in this game. I know Charles Alexander and Marvin Dowdle um, appear to be good players on the surface, but when you have this much experience, I remember we had, we had Johnny Kutu, who has arguably been in the top two in MVP voting every season he was in. We came in season, uh, season one and got blown out by 30 to the uh, werewolves, not because they were that much better, because they had a ton of experience and we had none, you know. That's another team I forgot is gone. Yeah, you hate to see oh, it. So many people gone. You said Johnny and almost cried. Tough. Um, anything we want to say about the Warriors? I know we don't really know much about them yet. Uh, does anyone have anything they kind of want to bring up before we move on to our next game? Uh, just because it's so early in the season with a bunch of new guys, we're not going to have a ton of information on these guys yet. Uh, I mean, just like once again, like I said, the last game at first glance, they're going to be probably one of these middle of the pack teams. They can come right in and punch a team like halfway right in the mouth figuratively and get a good win they're going to give a lot of teams some trouble. And I'll be the first one to say that I have not seen these guys, these guys play a lick of basketball, but I mean, to come in and shoot three of them shot 50% or more or better. And the one who didn't still went and got 21. So it's just like, this is going to be like that fourth or fifth team that could, that you could probably lose sleep over with a loss. I if, this is a, if this is a group of guys that, doesn't have a whole lot of experience in this league and they're coming in and they're, they're beating one of the original teams on night one and they've got a good one punch by the looks no of it. I mean, on halfway. I mean, yeah. And if you're, if you're letting your second guy, your second leading score put up 18 threes in a game, if you still have, if you have that confidence in them to let them do it, then when they fall on the right night, you might be in trouble. For sure, you know, and, and it's one of those things where they could have caught Hathaway on their worst night, um, but as a team with experience, I'm a little disappointed in them. They have to come out and win this first game. I know, again, it's the Rhode Island Warriors, but it's really not. Um, you know, so I think Joey's got to rally the troops and, and get them going here, but I don't want to have this game too much just because we don't know too much. The team that we do know a lot about, obviously, we're going to get to our next game. Duye's boys versus the Air Mambas. A couple of recurring names. I think these guys were on the team with uh, – uh, what was the yellow team called last year, Danny? I don't even remember their name. 
I I think they were the Mambas, weren't they? Are they there were some kind of Mambas. It was it there was, were a couple yeah. guys that are on that were on the Mambas, but do you it remember was that um, team Mikey was on? Yeah, um, remember the Stampede was... DJ? Wow, Who's that? the Stampede with Brad Allen. Yeah, Mario <laughs> Valerio was on that team. Do you remember him? Mario he was Valerio. The yes, State I do remember Mario Valerio, and and we remember Ashton Alcock. We remember a name from last year. Um, so we'll get to this game. We don't really need to look at the box score for to know stuff about these teams, but um, we'll leave the we'll leave the box score up in case anyone wants to touch on anything. Duye's boys, same team, different guys, same, same goal, story, same goal. I uh, come out there and and you know that's that's what we do. We go out there and win games by twenty or more every time, and you know, and uh, this is obviously, as Joey likes to say, the most biased podcast in the world. I'm good with that. I'm constantly <laughs> um, I'll give you a little rundown. As you see in this box score, Lucas Panakia, 42 points, um, five rebounds, six assists, three steals in his in his first game in Legacy Leagues. Um, he is arguably going to be one of the best players in this league. He's, I'm problem. In that. he's, problem. he's a huge problem. Um, he's a great point guard. He's little, but that doesn't stop him from getting to the rim um, for whatever reason. Uh, they let him walk into 14 threes last, uh, last game and just take them. And I mean, if you're going to leave him open to take 14 threes, he's going to hit half of them, you know? And when you're, when you're dropping seven threes and you have Corey Bardsley, uh, another one of my guys from EWG taking 11 threes and hitting six, you have Kyle Wolf, who's a returner veteran in the league, taking five threes, hitting three, you know, as a team, when you shoot 42%, from three and you take almost 40 threes that's a problem for any team on any given night and i'm not just saying that because it's us if any team was hitting 16 threes a night in, in this short of a time of a game that's a problem um obviously you know um they didn't they didn't really think luke uh, of lucas too much when they were guarding him out there on tuesday night because he's a little guy but i think the league's going to be put on a little bit of notice there um, and then, you know, we have obvious returners, Nate Kirschenbaum, um, Garen's back. I'm back. Shane, you're back. We have a couple surprises coming for everybody, which we'll talk about. There's a the storm end. coming. At There's the end. storm coming. Um, but we have new guys with Tyler Legassi. Uh, Jared Zalkberg is going to be coming. He's a new guy as well. And obviously our two new rookies who had great games in their first games and, uh, you know, Lucas and Corey. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, all these new guys were the kids that I coached at EWG. Corey was the leading three-point shooter in the state of Rhode Island, regardless of division. Kid is an absolute sniper. He can shoot another ratchet. Yeah. And, and then, you know, Lucas is, I would say, is I'd put him up against anybody for point guards. I mean, love the kid. He's a, he's a dog. Uh, he played most of our season this year on an ankle that was literally the color of my hat. He twisted it in this first game and was still dropping 30 points a game. So, I mean, the kid's an animal. I'm not worried about him being in the league too much. He's, he, he can get hammered by, by people in the paint and he's going to get right back up. I mean, as you saw in that highlight, so, um, you know, he'll be all right. I'm really interested to see going forward because <clears throat> he said in his interview, he was like, yeah, like it took a couple shots, but then once I got the hang of the low rims, it was pretty easy to shoot. I'm interested to see, because these were a lot of new guys on the other team. So I don't know if it was they just didn't want to get a hand up in the face. I want to see how things go next week, because you guys get halfway next week, and you get a, a team that's a bit more seasoned, a bit more size. And you were saying you do have a, a, some undersized guys that you brought in this year, which I'll give you a lot of props. Halfway's going to be out of breath, trying to trying to yeah. catch Lucas I did right now. And that's, once again, he's just fast and shifty. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. It's not fair. I, think I give you a lot of props. You lose three of the four of the so-called death lineup from last year. Yeah. And you work the phones and you come through and, and two of the guys you bring in combined for 62. I mean, first. what I, I will say is, I mean, what the last three or four years that we've been playing. If you remember game one, it's been ass every time for us. We've, we've squeaked it out. It's hurt. We've like had ice bags on by the time we get to the sideline. It's been a dog fight every game one, almost every game last year. To win one by 20, I love Johnny. I love Vinny. I love Zach. Miss them all. That's never happened. We've never shot like that. From three, from mid-range layups, dunk nothing. We've never shot that well. And the defense was there. I mean, 
defensive and changes. Credit so, yeah. to myself for teaching them that all year, but they talked on defense and their switching is great. I mean, the chemistry between Lucas, Corey, and Tyler out there on defense is just unmatched. They were all over the place the whole night and they're young. They can run. Those kids played 40 minutes a game for me in high school. And, you know, for them to go out there and play 40 minutes a game against guys who can't last out there for more than five minutes, they're going to be able to run all day. So oh, that's, yeah. That's how we're going to play this They're year. Feisty. It's it's They're very feisty. reminiscent of the championship Duye's boys team when we were all young and had fresh legs Oof. and could just run all day on teams. And that's how we won every game. Um, you know, and we did that as a nine seed where by the end of the year, everyone was beat up and tired and we were still fresh um, even as a nine seed. So I think we're going to be just fine. Um, but, you know, go, going through the rest of the year, I'm really excited to see what Lucas and Corey do. They're going to be one of the better duos in the league. Um, you know, and, uh, to, to, for anyone that doesn't know, um, we do have Brian Yars coming back. Uh, he just was a little bit banged up, so he wasn't able to be there. Um, and Shane, congratulations to him. For those of you that don't know, has got a new job at, at top golf. So they're sending him out to New Jersey, I believe. So he, his spot is going to be taken by, uh, a friend of ours, Des Williams, who will be there next week. Um, and all I have to say is, is, is honestly, I feel really bad for the rest of the league. If you're going to let us win by 20 without Brian and Dez, who are arguably two top 10 players in the league, I don't know what in else. The league, the in the league, yeah, in the state. Yeah, in, in the state. I, I, I'll stamp I agree. that right now in the state. Dez is number one. That's not even a question in my mind. But yeah, so, top you know, stay easy. Hey, this yeah. is a bit of an aside, but what top golf are you going to work at? I'm going to be at the one in, oh, you mean like when in Jersey when I'm out there? Yeah. Um, I think, what is it? At Edison. Um, uh, okay. I think that's okay. where I'm going. That's close. 30 to minutes from Tony Stefano's house, in case anyone was wondering. Maybe we'll take stop. a home drive. I'll come visit you. I'd love it. I'd love it. Um, but you know, so that, that's our little, that's our little scoop on the Duyez boys. I got Maybe. one more thing to add in on them. If you, if you'll allow me. What's that, Danny? Because I'm, I'm really interested to see what the rotations are going to look like this year for you guys, because last year it was the kind of thing where, cause I think this year you're going to have guys like Nate and Wolfie stepping up and taking on a bigger role than they did last year. Wolfie and last started year, and had a great game. Oh yeah. yeah. He had a fantastic game. And I think last year it was the kind of thing where of our top four guys, you needed to have at least two of them on the floor for us to be competitive at every minute of the game. So I'm really interested to see what it's going to be like, like will like, Brian and, and Dez aside, like I know Dez is technically going to be a rookie, but we're going to throw him off to the side here. I'm interested to see like with these four, four newer guys or four like lesser experienced guys, like is this, are there going to be lineups where it's very atypical for the Duyez boys, but they're still able to get by and succeed? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think that we ran a lineup with what we had the other day. Shane was obviously suspended for the first quarter for his Ooh. little debacle in the semifinals, which is here, neither here nor there, but, um, you know, we started a lineup of Wolfie, Tyler, Lucas, Corey. Um, Tyler is a small center, and I don't know. So G-Day is, is, was, is the big guy, the center on the other team. Had some great blocks. Really cool kid. He was, like, pretty funny, joking around with Shane. But Yeah, he was good. Smartest kid on that uh, team, I told him all night, by the way. And he is. But there were some, there were some plays where Tyler's boxing him out out of bounds Ooh. and what the hell is going on. So, you know, I know Ty's a strong kid. That's what he does. He's not going to put up 10 points in the stat sheet. He's going to be the kid that dives on the ground for every single ball. And oh, is going to be the, he's the kind of kid that would say, I'm going to go guard Jose and he's going to use his six fouls and every single possession, he's going to push him out of bounds. And Jose's going to be like, what the hell is going on? Why we is love that. Shoving me around, you know? So he's fearless and I love that. Um, that's why he's here. So, you know, I think we're going to be all right. Obviously, I foresee us being a top two team in this league. I don't question that at all. Um, worst case scenario, I see us at three, but we'd have to have a tough, tough way the rest of the way, especially with Des and Brian. Um, and I don't know if there's an answer in this league for for Des right now when he comes back. So let me just spoil. Let me just. There's not. There's yeah, not. Th th there's not. I don't think there is. I. I mean, I'd be. I'd be hard pressed to believe that there's anybody that can guard him. He's... I've seen what Dez does to grown ass men, bro. Coming here, and I'm not once again not shot to anyone here. I'm a slouch. I come here to have fun at this point. There's no defending that. I've done it. I've tried to do it once. You don't know how many points he got? Sixty. 
and that's just the thing. You know, he's he's the same exact height as Jose, um, with the skill set of a guy who could have been playing professional basketball and did play professional basketball uh, overseas. So, um, you know, we'll see. He's still got the the athleticism to be able to do it. Um, you know, it's just a matter of if he wants to, I feel like there's nights where he could just put up 50 and the other teams are going to be like, I don't know what just hit us. Um, but clearly Lucas can do that too at, at his frame and his talent. So, uh, we'll see how we go from here. I don't, in talking about the Mambas, I want to get to them a little bit. Um, obviously there's some guys, we know, Mario Valerio, uh, Ashton. I actually don't think that they're that bad of a team. I don't foresee them being a top four team. They remind me very much. Um, they're better than like the Lincoln 18 ers were last year. Yeah. Uh, they're I'm trying to give like a comparison of, of, of a team that was like very decent uh, that, that people would have in short memory, but they're really not bad. I they just, like boom before Jose. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're, they're really not that bad. They're athletic. They're, they got the guys that can score. I mean, Anthony Ramsey was putting up points. Uh, he was good. They have a kid. I think it's San, uh, Santiago Guerrero looks literally like uh if you cloned jose and made him seven inches shorter yeah hysterical. um but you know i i i don't think that they're going to be bad i don't think they're going to be higher than that bottom four um but that's not because they're bad um you know i think they had a they're, I mean, they, they just had, had a really bad shoot at night and they had and a, a lot of game. turnovers too yeah they shot themselves right out of the game right and the boys defense but i mean whatever and when you come in and you face a team that's experienced like us, even though we have new guys, we have the veterans that are going to, you know, kind of guide those new guys the way that they need to go. And you're not, you're not going to have the best night in the world. Um, but, you know, I, I think they're going to be fine. It just depends on what their schedule looks like, but you know, I, I think that they're, they're going to win some games and, you know, they might shock a couple teams on a bad night. Like they could get halfway crooks on a bad night. They can definitely get a team like the Warriors. They can definitely get a team like the ice trays and they could definitely get a team like ball don't lie, which to get to that, we're going to go to that game next. Um, Lob city. Everyone's in love with them. They're super flashy. They dunk the ball. They're big. I mean, they're all, they're all I didn't play no defense, huh? Look at that first quarter. This, mean, is, what? this is is this anything that we don't normally see? Like, I'm not all right, yeah. I'm not shocked by this like Lob City put on these numbers. But Lob City don't play defense like that if you'd be scoring eight points. Uh, so I mean they had to shoot terribly in the first quarter. Lob City There's... also shot Whoa, 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 whoa I just saw they that. made wow. four threes. They shot 70% all night. Yeah, I mean, but they shot, they made four threes. So you're looking at their 85 field goals attempted. 73 of them are dunks. That's only one way to stop that. You know, um, they had 17 turnovers. Obviously, they had a million possessions. So that's kind of like a, a wash. Yeah, um, I will say for, for ball, don't lie, because there's only one name that I recognize on that team. And that's Ellis Ellis Einhorn. Einhorn. Yeah. Ellis I mean, ball, don't lie. They were, I think it was two years ago, or it was like the COVID year that they came back and it was, they had a season and they were one of those teams that the first couple of weeks of the year, they really struggled. And then they didn't really find their stride until the end of the year. And then come playoff time, they actually knocked off the ozone boys in the first round of the playoffs. But like oh, I said, right. I only recognize I one name. So I don't think other than Ellis, they brought anybody from like Grant Rosenberg. I think he was rookie of the year that year. Grant I don't Rosenberg. think they brought anybody else back from that, that team. Yeah. I mean, and uh, you know, Lob is the same team that they've been the last couple of years. Um, I mean, the shocker here about Lob is Nuri had 20. Well, and once again, not a shot, but Nuri is usually not your 20 point go-getter. He just Nuri kind of controls the rim. Did he? Wow. Shout out Nuri. Um, almost a quadruple. Damn, 10 assists. Yeah, almost a quadruple. Seven steals. He had seven steals. Wow. Okay. And I mean, that's a, quite a stat line. Um, but you usually don't see 20 points from Nuri. Um, the rest you kind of do see. Um, and that's a thing I, I said about um, Gian Camellia. If you look at these guys, you can tell they've been playing together for however many sessions. They all have good assist numbers. 
They like do. It's, they're all closer to five, way over five. It's just, it's, you can tell these guys know how each other play. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, the, I want to touch on a few things with Lob. I love the kid. He's awesome. And I'm glad to see him kind of, this looks like he's back to his form of Cody Crawford shooting 42% from three. Um, he's been struggling. He said he felt good. He said he felt yeah. good when I talked to him. He's been struggling to shoot last couple of seasons. And he's like, I don't know what's going on. He was like, literally used to be lights out. Like if you let well, him he touch the ball as much. Yeah. You know, and, and so seeing him shoot 42% is good, but you take him out of the equation for this game. Lob has one three. And if I remember vividly, when we beat Lob last year and during the regular season, and we were undefeated for the regular season, when we beat them, we beat them pretty handedly. And, or was it a, I don't remember if it was close or it got close. We were up kind of decent and then we kind of just got lax, but we, we could have beat them better than what we did, but they're a good team. So, I mean, I'm not surprised, but we, we let them shoot that game. We made them. We didn't, we didn't play, let them shoot. We yeah. let them shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, if you don't play their tempo of basketball and they're like downhill and that's where they kill everyone, they're going to run you out of the gym. It's simple. If you can stop, the, if you can slow it down, let them shoot the ball. If someone's hot, it's going to be Cody, could be Vic, but like I, I live and die with them at the three point line. If I, if that's how I die, that was the game plan. But I'm living with those shots for sure. Absolutely. Danny, you want to touch on this a little bit? Yeah. You know what I was actually doing here? I just pulled up my Excel sheet from the <laughs> offensive and defensive ratings that I did last year. And I'm trying to kind of compile the it. The um, guy. No, yeah, I'm trying to compile it because I want to, you know, I want to, because this looks like on paper, this is probably one of the most efficient nights from a team. Yeah, I mean, look at all these numbers. That's really nuts. Doing this. It's nothing new. I mean, it's top to bottom. I mean, with that Murray style line might be the best one I've seen. Oh, yeah. With the exception ever. of Justin, who he's another guy that we know can put up double figures. If you can get that many guys, like, Game Breakers did it and Lob did it, having more, at least five guys in double figures. Like, you're going to have a tough time contending with that any night of the week if you've got that Absolutely. many people contributing for you. Lob had seven guys in double digits. It's pretty and crazy. Justin had zero. Yeah, just had how good they are. They, I mean, they only lost, like, what, three or four times in the last four sessions? Three of us, three of them being us. Shout out to your boys. But that's besides the point. Um, and what, the other one was good you in the semis. Yeah. That was it. So, I mean, they're as sound of a team as they could be. And the numbers reflect it. Yeah. I mean, the scary thing is it's for us, it's we know that we can beat them. We've done it in the past. We know that they can beat us because we've lost by a lot to them before. But we're, it seems that realistically, we're one of the only teams that kind of has them figured out to some extent. I don't we're know. The greatest rivalry in this league. Ever. Uh, well, I I just don't know what these other teams see and then they don't do on the court because the only reason that we've ever beaten them is, I mean, they're not, we're not like absurdly ever more talented than them, but we just make them play the way that they don't want to. Yeah. Um, And I don't know why other teams don't at least try to do that. I, I think it's the appeal of you want to try and get into a dunk contest with Lob because that's what they do. And they, those seem to be the easy points, but like they're athletic, they're fast. Like, if you want to run up and down, you're going to realize that's a tough way to play. And the credit to them, they do it, obviously, the best in the league, better than anyone. But other teams, they get into that mindset, oh, yeah, I can dunk it. I can get them back. And when you can't, and then when the dunks aren't falling because they're sound defensively, before you know it, you're down 20. Then they just start getting flashy. The balls are up in Lob City. Boom. they just throwing alleys to each other, having fun with it. Before you know it, what did they lose by? Oof. 63. I mean, they just didn't play defense. That's that's great. And then they didn't score the ball. Yeah. Ball don't lie on that one. I think sure. it's, it's probably, I mean, again, you probably have a lot of rookies on ball don't lie. You go down 30 to 8 in the first <laughs> quarter. Probably a little defense, bit defense, defense, my boy. They didn't play defense at all. No, I, I agree. And, and, and for a new team, you know, that's going to be tough if they're going to do that. 
Um, we've seen teams that just don't play defense in the past and, you know, they, they definitely struggle to win games. Um, but again, I don't necessarily have much to say about ball. Don't lie until maybe next week until we learn a little bit more about who these guys are and what they're capable of. Um, but I do know and that they stick around next week, watch some of these guys play. Yeah. You know, but I just do know that watching a team lose to lob by 63, isn't something that I'm <laughs> super so, shocked. Yeah. It doesn't about. shock you. You know, so I think I think we're we're gonna get some more info about who these teams are and when they have different matchups. It's tough to judge a, a team of mostly new guys against playing lob. It's like, yeah, you know, what what are you gonna do? It's like throwing a high school team out there against the Yankees. Um, but you know, I, I think obviously there's been eight seasons in the league. Lobs won seven championships. Shout out to us winning 2019. Um, but you know, they're the team to beat every year. Um, you know, we, I gotta you said that, and that's something that's aggravated me. So if we'd played um, Lob City in the finals like we were supposed to the last two years, all I'm saying is it's a 4-4 four, four swing our way. We've been robbed. They've been robbed again to the final a couple of times, and that matchup would have been ours. So, Yeah, I, I definitely think the year that Johnny and Vinny were not there, we were oh. one in the fourth quarter. Was that tough. one was tough. And then uh, overtime last year in the semis, couple like that. Beginning and 30 seconds, seconds of overtime kind of time. was tough. Yeah, it's that so we've had some tough playoff losses where it's like we could have we we should have three at least, but I'm I love the one we have. So yeah, I, I agree with you there. I think every Duye's boy will agree with you on those, but you know, hopefully this year is a another shot to get one. I, I, I think that that's in my eyes, the top two teams in the league are us and them this year, and that's kind of the way it's been the last four four seasons. So you know, we'll kind of see if that trend continues and we'll go from there. Um, but now to get back to a fun segment that we get to do, kind of our last segment here before we go, it's a little bit shorter, usually a week one for the podcast because we don't have too much information on everybody. Um, but I do want to go around and I'm going to start with Danny. We'll go to Shane. We'll come back to me. I want you to give your two early predictions for MVP, rookie of the year, defensive player of the year. Um, Actually, you know what? Let's go, let's go. Let's go. MVP, Rookie of the Year, Offensive Player of the Year. We'll skip the rest for now. We don't know too much about everybody's defensive prowess. Let's do that. MVP, Rookie. Doji boys excluded. Like we're not allowed to pick. Anyone oh no, we can pick or... us. Okay. We can pick right. us. I would say let's keep it. Let's be realistic about it. We can be realistic. We don't have to. Yeah, let's let's be realistic. Uh, we can pick. I'm not winning Offensive all. Player of the Year this year. I get it. Yeah, yeah. No, we could definitely pick our guys. I, I, in my head, I have a guy from our team winning one of the awards at, at a bare minimum. But you know, let's start with Danny. I kind of want to see where your head's at. We'll go to Shane, then we'll come back to me, and we'll we'll wrap it up. So, in my head, I want I want to go with Lucas, either rookie or offensive player of the year. I get that you have the big forty two point outburst night one, and I'm not knocking them at all. Um, I just think that there's a lot of season guys in this league if you look at the game breakers especially you've got a lot of guys on that team that were all under 20 points because they were kind of playing combined basketball so I want to see what some more guys do over the next couple weeks so like a guy like Gian he's always a guy that I want to pin as MVP he averaged 40 points last year he dropped 90 in a game last year so he's always going to be one to watch out for for either offensive or MVP and then rookie of the year, if I don't go with Lucas, I want to see what what Joe on Game Breakers does because he can get above the rim and it it got it looks it looks scary <laughs> looking at those highlights. So it's gonna be a good year. I'm interested to see what a lot of these guys do on a lot of these teams. I think those are good picks. Uh Shane, let's hear from you. I, I have a feeling I know where your head's at. Well, all right, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be pretty fair. Um rookie of the year, I got like Lucas just like we're talking early it has to be that's impressive but never really play any and a half and come in shoot like that be a dog like that so I'm gonna say, say Lucas um MVP and this is where I know where you're if, go. if not if not Des um that like there's the easy answer for me it's just because I've seen it I know what's about to happen but if not Des I'm gonna tell you right now it's a sleeper it's out of nowhere it's Colin Burns he's been like the guy for lob, but quietly, I think this is the year that you see him like go and get it. And all probably like I respect the hell out of him. He's a, he's a hooper for sure. But 
I think this is the year you see him. Like, we've seen it. We've seen Vic lead that team. We saw Jose lead that team. Now I think it's Colin's turn. I think Colin goes and gets it. 27, 30 a night. Don's playing defense. It just goes and wins the MVP quietly. But like I said, if not, Des. So. Yeah, and we, uh, we, you know, you just saw Colin Burns featuring uh, a remake of White Man Can't Jump uh, in his role there. So, um, <laughs> You know, well, I'm glad he's back from doing that to be able to play in the legacy leagues. And uh, no, he's he's a great player. He's one, I think, offensive player of the year a few times. Um, he hey, got- I know you said we're not going to do defensive player right now, but I'm really interested to see who ends up getting that because Brian has I would, not getting. I would say number That's zero. Uh, That's for Brian Hessen. Um, yeah. Zero from who, uh, what, who did we just play? The Mambas? G Day. He, he had like four or five blocks and they weren't like old little. They were off the glass. They were like some moonshots. So you got, you got him protecting the it, rim. I mean, Jeff Mitchell's me, back. Him. He won it last year. <laughs> it's gonna be either it's it's zero. He's you can just tell he's hungry him. to clean up the backboard. Um, for me, I'm gonna go rookie of the year again. This is if the season were to end today. Um, I'm definitely going Lucas. Um, I foresee him doing this the rest of the year. Um, you know, and the, the funny thing is, is that they're going to throw their best player at him next week when Des is there (laughs) and, and Lucas might score 15 and then they're going to turn around and say, Oh, who who do we have next week? Halfway. Halfway next week. Halfway. So, they're gonna send their biggest defender at Des. I know State number one. They're gonna they're gonna, gonna send Jeff. Jeff. They're gonna send Jeff at Des, and I feel bad okay. because Jeff is a defensive player of the Listen, year. Listen, that's fine. Different. Des is probably gonna get 50 points, 50, 60 points easy. If yeah. I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but he'll be damn close. It, it's like that game when Jose said he was gonna get 50 and he did, and you were like, all right, he did. yeah. That. Um, yeah, I can foresee that being a thing. And like if and I had to make a bet next week, it's Des go get he gets 50. Yeah, I'm if we were going plus minus 35, I'm going the over for sure. Oh, way over. Yeah. So, you know, th- that's that's that. But so Lucas is definitely my rookie of the year. I, I have faith in the case and do this the rest of the way. Um, you know, I, offensive player of the year, I think you can you could probably see somebody like um Charles Alexander from the Warriors go and get it because he's going to have such a high volume and probably have to score almost 30 points a game to keep his team in the game every time. Um, So seeing him win an offensive player of the year wouldn't be like absurd. Um, And then for MVP, I, I, I think obviously like Danny said, everyone's gonna be watching for Gian. I think Colin Burns is a great pick. Um, I, I think that, that, in reality, and it's it sounds so biased and stupid to say that that Dez is really probably going to be the front runner for MVP when he comes back, but I just don't know realistically with his skill set if there's going to be anybody that's able to. There's nothing against the rules about how talented somebody can be. There's only how big, and he's not a seven footer. He's he's six four. He's he's Jose's height, which is the the limit, and his talent is just off the charts. So I'm curious to see what happens when teams try to throw their best defender at him. I don't think it's going to matter, um, but you know, it, we'll see. That's going to change the style of way that we play, um, you know, but I'm, I think we're willing to let him go get 40 a night if he wants to. I think he can put up those kind of numbers like Gian did last year. And he's also going to be a guy that can get all the rebounds on the court too. So he might be a walking double, double, triple, double, um, when he when he starts to play, he's a point guard. That's that's Jose's size. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes from here. But that's kind of where my head's at for for predictions this year. Defensive player of the year, I think it could be like a Jeff Winchell again. It might transition to be the Jeff Winchell Award now that Brian Heston's gone. But uh, you know, we'll we'll see where that goes. That's a little bit of a tough one. But um, you know, obviously, there's a lot to speculate on week one in the books and. Uh, you know, we'll we'll see how the the teams shake out after about three or four weeks, and and where the standings are. But, um, you know, that's I think that's going to probably wrap it up for us for week one. Shane, Danny, you guys have anything else you want to add before uh, we kind of let you go? I just want to see the game breakers' first real tests next week. They get lob in the seven p.m. spot. Ooh. 
So I want to see how these four guys, those their big four, big five, really, kind of how they can make it happen if they're playing cohesive basketball for 40 minutes against Lob. Shane, anything? Just can't wait for next week. Can't wait. I'm with you on that one. Uh, so that's going to do it for the low post podcast for week one. I know we didn't have a ton of info on the new guys yet, but I promise you next week we'll have some more stats. We will do some averages and, you know, not look at just a one game spread to see how guys are. So we will, uh, we'll keep you posted with that. Um, you know, and, and Danny last year used to leave us with, with a little quote um, every, every podcast. I haven't really thought of one on the spot. So Danny, since that is your forte, I'm going to let you rip something off the cuff. Um, what we want to leave these guys with for week one. Oh God, you really put me on the spot here. I mean, you got to give the, the the old classic, take care, brush your hair. Love it. <laughs> take care, brush your hair. Shout out, Oh man. All right, guys, that'll, that'll be it. Take care. <laughs>